एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल अनुपमा बायोलॉजी क्लासेस दिस इज़ द नाइन्थ वीडियो इन द सीरीज ऑफ ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी इन विच वी अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द ह्यूमन सेंसरी सिस्टम एंड दिस लेक्चर इज द सेक्शन बी ऑफ पार्ट सेवेंथ नाउ कम ऑन द टॉपिक व्हिच इज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द सेंसरी सिस्टम ऑफ आवर बॉडी सो इट इज़ द पार्ट ऑफ नर्वस सिस्टम रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर प्रोसेसिंग सेंसरी इन्फॉर्मेशन दैन सेंसरी इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द चेंजेस विद इन द बॉडी विच यूज टू मेनटेन होम्योस्टासिस इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ सिंपल टू कॉम्प्लेक्स सेंसरी रिसेप्टर्स एंड इन आवर बॉडी देर आर फाइव सेंसरी रिसेप्टर्स लाइक आई नोज एयर टंग एंड स्किन so these five sense organs have different types of sensory information like eye has light receptors ear has position and sound receptors skin has touch pressure pain and temperature receptors tongue has chemical receptors and nose also have chemical receptors now the basic structure of the sensory receptors which is of two types in which the first one is primary sense cells it is the simplest and most primitive type of sensory receptor is a signal unspecified sensory neuron whose terminal and is capable of detecting stimuli this is the olfactory lobe and the olfactory cells belong to this type of primary sense cells second is secondary sense cells it is the most complex sense receptors which are modified epithelial cells able to detect stimuli they form synaptic connections with the sensory neurons which transmit impulses to the cns mammalian taste bud receptors are of this type of cells this is the secondary sense cells now the working of sensory receptors and for this there are different sense organs which have different receptors and these receptors receives particular stimuli and set up appropriate electrical impulse in the nerves so what are stimulus a stimulus are form of energy like light sound pressure heat osmotic potential electric current and chemical changes and animal respond to stimulus in a four step process in which the first is sensory transduction sensory receptors transduce the energy for a stimulus into a localized non propagated electrical response which initiates nerve impulse in the neurons leaving the receptor second is transmission the sensory neuron relays the impulse to the brain directly or through the spinal cord then the integration a nerve impulse that reach the brain by sensory neurons are sensations after perceptions by brain it transmit motor impulses to the appropriate effectors and the last that is response effector produce suitable response so the suitable response are like gland secretions of chemical or muscle contraction now the sense are of two types in which the first one that is the spatial sense these are localized in specific organs like eye ear nose and tongue and the second is general sense this is scattered all over the skin sensory adaptation if a stimulus once noticed by the receptors remains constant it becomes less noticeable This mechanism is called sensory adaptation and it checks the nervous system for becoming too sensitive. For example, you soon cease to smell a perfume applied to the body or clothes, but other approaching you can still note its fragrance. Now, the type of receptors and it is of two types. First, according to the location and second according to the form of stimulus energy they detect and transform so according to the location it is of three types first one is the exterior receptors like touch taste and smell and sense organ of sight and hearing which are located at the body surface and is stimulated by environmental changes second is proprio receptors like position of our arm or leg with having to look at it which are located in skeletal muscles joints and tendons etc 
and the last is visceral receptors like uh, sensations such as pain hunger thirst which are located in visera and affected by stimuli originating from body itself according to the form of stimulus it is of five types first one is mechanoreceptors and the stif- effective stimuli are like uh, light touch and air movement airborne sound waves angular acceleration gravity linear acceleration pain position of body parts etc second is photoreceptors and the effective stimuli are light wavelength third is chemoreceptors and the effective stimuli are chemicals in solution then thermoreceptors in which the effective stimuli are cold and warm and the last that is electroreceptors in which the effective stimuli are electric current in surrounding water now we will discuss structure and functioning of eye and ear which is sense organ of sight or vision and uh, hearing respectively in which the first one that is the eyes which is the organ of sight eyes work in a similar way to camera when you look at an object light reflected from the object enters the eyes through the pupil and is focused through the optical components within the eye though the eye is a small organ it's essentially among the most complex organs of the human body its diameter is approx 2.5 cm and the study of structures function and disease of the eye is called ophthalmology and eye are situated in orbits or eye socket of the skull now if we talk about the structure of eyes it consists of two parts first one is wall of eye and second is contents of eye so in the picture you can see the anatomy of the eye in which the first that is the wall of eye and it has three parts in which the first one is fibrous coat and it protects the eyeball maintains its form and provides film surface for the insertion of eye muscles it has two regions first one is sclera and second is cornea in the picture you can see this is the sclera it forms the posterior 5 by 6 of the fibrous coat and it is whitish tough layer with tissue connected together the function of sclera to protect and maintains the shape of a eyeball second is cornea this is the cornea it forms anterior 1 by 6 of the fibrous coat its curved surface refracts light rays towards the retina and it serves as a cover to the eye against anything which can cause harm to the eye next is conjunctiva the cornea and the exposed part of sclera are covered externally by a thin transparent membrane that is known as conjunctiva in the picture you can see the structure of conjunctiva it has conjunctival glands which is the portion that contains mucus for moist and eyes failure or malfunctions of these gland might probably results to serious pain and itching conjunctiva also protects cornea now the second part that is the vascular coat it has three reasons first one is choroid it darkens the cavity of eyeball to prevent internal reflection of light that might blur the image it is the interphone between the retina and sclera which is responsible for the provision of nutrients to other part of the eye second is iris in the picture you can see this is the iris it is a thin colored partition at the junction of sclera and cornea it is perforated at the middle by the pupil so in the iris the color of the eye is determined its segment that gives the eye its color and the iris is surrounded by the pupil in all its side the iris widen and shrink the pupil depending upon the intensity of light into the eye if light is low the iris will be widen the pupil and if light is bright the iris will be shrink in the pupil here the pupils in the center of eye and looks like a black dot with tiny hole that allows the passage of light 
so there are two types of muscle in rs sphincters and dilators so this is show the pupillary reflexes action and here are two types of muscles are responsible sphincters and dilator in bright light sphincters muscle contracted and dilator muscles relaxed so pupil reduced while in the second picture that is in dim light the sphincter muscle relaxed and dilator contracted so pupil dilated now the third that is the ciliary body the inner surface of the ciliary body is thrown into radiating folds this is ciliary process which projects into the eyeball behind the peripheral margin of the iris the vascular coat is thickened to form the ciliary body it has ciliary muscles you can see in the picture these are the ciliary muscles which is of two types circular and meridional now this is the human eye section view and the third part of the wall that is the retina retina is found at the back of the eye its major function is to receive light from the focus and transmit it to the electrical impulse before being sent to the brain this is the structure of retina you can see the in the picture it has three parts first one is the optic part it lies in contact with the choroid this is choroid in the picture then a small portion of the optical part lying opposite the center of cornea that is the macula lutea this is the macula lutea structure in the middle of the macula lutea a shallow depression which is known as fovea centralis this is the fovea centralis and in retina optic nerves start from the blind spot and blind spot or optic disc and optic nerves is the collection of nerves that carry impulses from the retina to the brain this is the blind spot and here a word that is the macula lutea macula lutea also known as yellow spot and it is very close to the retina which helps the eyes to focus on object now the second that is the ciliary part it lies in contact with the ciliary body and this is the ciliary body and the last one that is the iridial part it lies in contact with the iris you can see in the picture after that the structure that is the lenses lenses lies just behind the iris it consists of lens capsule it provides fine focus of light on the retina it is a very transparent layer after the pupils receives the light from its surrounding the lens then focus the light up to the retina now the content of eyeball this is the structure you can see this is the content of the eyeball that is aqueous humor and vitreous humor the lens and suspensory ligaments divide the cavity of eyeball into aqueous chamber and vitreous chamber here is the lens and here is the aqueous humor which is present in anterior portion and in the posterior portion vitreous humor aqueous chamber has two parts anterior and posterior which is filled with aqueous humor vitreous chamber is full of vitreous humor obstruction in the flow of aqueous humor into the blood causes glaucoma so this is the complete structure of the eye from internal view which starts from the two part that is wall and content of eyes in wall there are some structures like sclera cornea conjunctiva choroid iris ciliary body which has ciliary process and ciliary muscles you can see in the picture all the structures and retina is also in the walls which has optic part which contains optic disc or blind spot and a shallow depressions that is fovea centralis and retina has also ciliary and iridial parts and lenses after that content of eye has aqueous chamber and vitreous chamber aqueous is in uh, has the anterior cavity which has two parts posterior and anterior here a canal of sclerem 
you can see in the picture which the aqueous chamber continuously secreted and drained into venous system so this is the structure now after that the most important part that is the working of eye it means how does eye works so for this it has two parts in which the first one is focusing part it consists of conjunctiva cornea aqueous humor lens and vitreous humor these parts are transparent and act as lens they refract the light rays passing through the eye to bring them to focus on the retina maximum refraction is caused by cornea and the lens effects fine adjustment and brings the image into a sharp focus and the second is receptor part it comprises the retina the image formed on the retina is inverted and is smaller it converts the energy of a specific wavelength of light into receptor potential of the nerve fibers the nerve impulses are carried by the optic nerves to the visual area of cerebral hemispheres where the real perception of sight arises and one sees the object upright this is the picture here you can see how do we see and here light rays enters our eye when we look at an object these rays are refracted before getting to the retina an inverted image is formed the retina which is smaller than the object you can see in the picture that what your eye sees then of the job of the retina is to transmit electrical impulse from the retina to the brain hence it send impulses to the brain which interprets this image and it gives the real size and details of object this is the process which is very fast and repeated for all objects seen so this is how do we see after that i as a photographic camera and here you can see the same structure of i and camera like the first one that is in the camera the boxes are present which is same as sclera in camera black inner print paint which is same as choroid in camera shutter which is same as eyelids in camera diaphragm which is same as iris in camera light hole which is same as pupil in camera lenses which is same as lens in eyes also in camera light sensitive plate which is same as retina or film in camera image is small and inverted which is same as in eye in which image is also small and inverted so this is how a camera and eyes shows the same structures now the accommodation it is the reflex mechanism by which the focus of the eye changes to make the images of the distant and near object sharp on the retina in this picture you can see the changes during accommodation here this is cornea this is lens this is ciliary muscles and this is focus on retina so these are the parts which help in the process of accommodation so the first in the distant objects this is the picture of the distant object in which the parallel light reach i cornea refracts light rays ciliary muscle relaxed suspensory ligament under maximum tension and lens flattened and in the case of the near objects you can see in the picture here the diverging light rays is strike eyes cornea refracts light rays ciliary muscle contracted suspensory ligament loose and lens become thickened therefore the degree of accommodation changed by changing the convexity of lenses this is done with the help of ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments which are said to form the accommodation apparatus now in the picture you can see the near vision ciliary muscles in case of near vision the ciliary muscles contracted suspensory ligament relaxed lens become thick and refraction increased 
while in case of the distant vision ciliary muscle relaxed suspensory ligaments on the maximum tension lens become thin and refraction decreased now the binocular vision in this both the eyes focus on the same object this provides depth to the images that is gives a stereoscopic or 3d effect and enables man to judge distance correctly man primates and predatory animals such as owl and cat has binocular vision then monocular vision in this each eye is focused on a separate object such as in rabbit birds etc color vision it is the ability of some animals to detect colors in an object while in some animals lack color vision and see objects in sets of gray that is monochrome vision color vision is found in humans apes monkeys and most fishes and the monochrome vision found in domestic and nocturnal animals nocturnal and diurnal vision man has both day and night vision because of rods and cones diurnal visions while owl has better night vision than day vision because of the large number of rods and few cones in the retina so owl shows noct nocturnal vision vitamin a and eye sight deficiency of vitamin a causes night blindness which is known as nyctalopia and in this the victim not to see clearly at night or when the light is dim after that the protective device of eyes and for this first one is the eyebrows it prevents falling of sweat and water drop trickling down the forehead second is eyelids it regularly closed at the short intervals to clean the cornea it has eyelashes which check the entry of dust particles tiny insects and rain drops into the eyes third is lacrimal glands it secretes a slightly saline watery fluid that contains a bacteriolytic enzymes lysozyme it moistens the surface of the eyeball nourish the non vascular cornea washes the cornea and kills the bacteria and the last that is the fat it serves as a soft sock proof pad after that the photoreceptors and it is of two types first one is rod cells it contains a purplish pigment visual purple or rhodopsin and it function in dim light and at night here a bright light which is splits rhodopsin into scotopsin retinal and energy this process is called bleaching by this the rod cells releases a neurotransmitter which is enters into the nerve impulse bipolar and ganglion cells to the optic nerve while in the dark the rhodopsin resynthesized by scotopsin retinal and energy this is called dark adaptation so here it makes rods functional and takes some time to form rhodopsin that's why when we entering a dark room at day time or on coming out of a well lighted room at night we feel blind for a while after that second is cone cells it contains a pigment that is visual violet or iodopsin this gives color vision because they have three different pigments for red green and blue for red erythrolab for green chlorolab and for the blue cyanolab lack of one or more type of cone cells causes color blindness now in this picture you can see the movements in eye by different types of muscles which is arranged in two groups first one is rectus and second is obliques 
in which the rectus has four parts which are superior rectus inferior rectus in the picture you can see then medial rectus which is uh, also known as internal and the last one that is lateral rectus which is also known as external after that the oblique has also two parts superior oblique and inferior oblique these all are responsible for the movement in the eyes now come on the topic that is the common eye defects in which the first is far sightedness or hypermetropia or hypropia in which the near objects appear blurred but far objects are seen clear in this so according to the name it is just opposite in this the position of image is near object is formed behind of the retina so the cause of arising is power of eye decrease and the focal length of the lens increases and the eyeball becomes too shorter this defect can be corrected by wearing glasses with convex lenses second is near sightedness or myopia people with this eye defect see near object clearly but not distant object a diverging or concave lens in the suitable for this uh, this near sightedness problem and in this the light rays converging in front of retina causes a blurred image after that the third that is the glaucoma it is the over production of the vitreous humor increases pressure in the eye and this crushes the delicate cells of the retina causing blindness you can see in the picture after that the cataract in this the lens become opaque due to disease or aging it leads to blindness it can be corrected by removing the lens and wearing suitable glasses or by replacing the defective lens with a normal lens it is also corrected by grafting a new cornea then the fifth that is astigmatism this is due to irregular curvature of the cornea or lenses it can be corrected by using cylindrical glasses and the last one that is presbyopia it is due to loss of flexibility of the lens it creates difficulty in focusing on near objects it can be corrected by using convex lens after the disease now compound eyes it is found in insects and crustaceans in the picture you can see the structure of a insect that is compound eye it consists of numerous omatidia each capable of forming image hence compound eyes in the picture you can see this is the structure of a compound eye each omatidium has two reasons diopatric reason and receptive compound eye is very acute at detecting movements of objects such as predators so after this the eye should be cared for very meticulously as it has been considered as the light of the body we should avoid direct contact with dirty fingers also we should see the optician quickly as soon as we notice any abnormalities in normal functioning of the eye so this is the end of eye now the second part that is the ear which is the organ of hearing and equilibrium it is oval funnel shaped skin here are the organs of hearing and equilibrium which convert mechanical energy to receptor potential and this receptor potential are called mechanoreceptors the study of structure function and disease of the ear is called otology and it is located on the sides of the head according to the structure it has three parts this is the structure of ear here three parts external ear middle ear and the inner ear so the first one that is the external ear it has two reasons first one is pinna 
in the picture you can see the structure of a pinna its outer stiff ridge is helix lower flexible lobe is lobule and its cavity is concha it is funnel shaped skin covered flap of elastic cartilage and muscles concha collects sound waves and directs them them to the external auditory canals this is the external auditory canal the second part of the external ear and the outer region of the canal bears hair so the hair serves to keep out the dust particles and its inner region has wax glands release the ear wax which lubricates and protects the blinking of the meters this is the auditory canal in the picture you can see the structure which is a s shaped tube leading inverted from the pinna and this is the tympanic membrane that is eardrum and this tympanic membrane is thin oval tightly stretched membrane closing the external auditory canal internally after that the second part of the ear that is the middle ear in the picture you can see the structure of the middle ear it consists of a tympanic cavity in the picture you can see this is the tympanic cavity in the middle ear and enclosed in the temporal bone it communicates with the nasopharynx by eustachian tube and the valves open during yawning swallowing and during or abrupt changes in altitude when air enters or leaves the tympanic cavity to equalize the pressure of air on the two sides of the tympanic membrane this is the auditory tube or eustachian tube then the blockade of eustachian tube cold may block the eustachian tube and the pressures outside and inside the middle layer do not equalize for this reason divers and flyers do not work when they have a cold outside pressure increases in diving and decreases in flying in both cases with blocked eustachian tube the middle layer pressure would remains the same and the difference might injure the ear drum then the fenestry inner wall of the tympanic cavity is formed of bone and it has two apertures upper fenestra ovalis in the picture you can see the oval window it's also known as fenestra ovalis and the lower fenestra rotunda it's also known as round window then the ear bones there are three small articulated bones ear are auditory ossicles in the picture you can see these are the auditory ossicles and these are of three types which are malus incus and stapes after that the third part that is the internal ear and this is the last part of the ear it is delicate irregular organ called the membranous labyrinth it is surrounded by bony labyrinth and between these two membranous and bony labyrinth perilymphatic space present which contains perilymph and the another fluid that is the endolymph in the picture you can see this is the perilymph in the bony labyrinth and endolymph in membranous labyrinth membranous labyrinth has three parts first one is vestibule it has two parts that is utricle and saccule in the picture you can see this is the utricle and the saccule it has two sensory spot that is macula of utricle and macula of saccule and a macula consist of hair cells and supporting cells then semicircular ducts it has three ducts superior posterior and lateral in the picture this is the anterior posterior and horizontal horizontal is also known as lateral and lower end of each duct enlarged to form ampulla now the cochlear duct this is the third part of the internal ear cochlear duct is 35 mm long and a part of the bony labyrinth that encloses the cochlear duct is called the cochlear canal and the cochlear duct and cochlear canal combine to form cochlea this is the structure of the cochlea in the picture you can see it now the cochlea has three chambers 
this is the structure of a complete structure of a cochlea and these chambers are first one is middle chamber known as scala media in the picture you can see the red arrow indicates scala media second is upper chamber known as scala vestibuli and the last one is the lower chamber known as scala tympani this is the scala tympani now the organ of corti this is the organ of corti it represent in basilar membrane and it is the organ of hearing it consists of receptor cells and supporting cells receptor cells are called hair cells inner hair cells and outer hair cells in the picture you can see the structure hair cells and the bending of the hair reduces the membrane potential of the hair cells causing release of their chemical transmitters initiation of the receptor's potential in the sensory nerve ending the tip of hair is embedded in the tectorial membrane this is the tectorial membrane and the supporting cells are of two types first one is the pillar cells and the second is dieter cells so now the function of ear and in the function of ear the first one is hearing in the picture you can see the process of hearing which is start from 1 2 3 4 5 6 points and arrow indicates the process of hearing so the first one that is the sound enters the ear then the tiny middle ear bones amplify the sound after that the cochlea sorts sound by frequencies then the nerve passes signals from the cochlea to the brain stem then the signal travels through the brain getting decoded along the way and the last one that is the auditory cortex which recognizes processes the sound so in the if the loudness of the sound is perceived by the rating of nerve impulse reaching the brain and the excessive loudness may destroy the sensory cells so we can't hear a man can hear frequencies as low as 20 cycles per second and as high as 20000 hertz per second now the second function that is the equilibrium here the cristi and macula are concerned with the equilibrium of body it is of two types first one is the dynamic equilibrium and the second is static equilibrium and linear acceleration now is insect tympanum it is a thin region of their body covering which vibrates in response to sound and stimulates a special receptor cells as it is displaced the crickets have ears on the legs a stomach dropping out in case of sudden vertical movements as in a rapidly accelerating elevator the semicircular ducts give a response that is communicated with the brain to create the stomach dropping out sensation and this feeling can be avoided by bending the head to look up at the ceiling of the elevator thus be fooling the semicircular ducts then the motion sickness movements of a ship in rough sea is stimulate the semicircular ducts in an unusual way and cause the sensation of nausea and vomiting called motion or sea sickness and the spinning is a damage to semicircular ducts causes to serve dizziness that a person may not be able to stand up and at last for the care of eye we should never probe the external ear canal with the hard objects such as tooth picks pencils match sticks etc consult your doctor in any case of the earache and discharge from the ear accumulation of dirt with ear wax causing earache so for this physician help should be taken to remove such a problem or the plug so this is the end of human sensory system in which you grasp knowledge about the eye and ear structure and the functioning the upcoming lecture will be on the human endocrine system so 
For more such videos, stay tuned with my channel Anupma Biology Classes. If you understand this lecture, like and share it and subscribe to my channel Anupma Biology Classes. If any questions, any doubts, any suggestion, you can write in the comment section below. Thank you for the watching.